preservation. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and in verse 12. He said, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. We started this study last week and we couldn't finish it so we decided to continue today. And our objective is to understand the wisdom keys and wisdom secrets of preservation. It was made clear last week that the way of wisdom is the way of life. And the way of foolishness is the way of destruction. We began to see divine wisdom keys for preservation last week. I won't take time. We'd like to go straight. The first we saw was that if someone was to be preserved, the person will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Shaddai. Number two, we said we are to possess preservation word the word of god is a shield for life and destiny preservation word the word of god we said produces after his kind possess preservation word number three maintain faith and trust in god because the scriptures made it clear that faith is a shield. In Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith we are able to quench the fiery darts of the, of the wicked. Number four is value divine guidance and direction when the lord is guiding you he guides you in the path of peace in the path of safety and where there is no divine guidance calamity is inevitable value divine guidance and direction number five avoid the wrong company many people have died before their time for keeping the company that is not right. Avoid the wrong company. The wrong company is a magnet of calamity. We saw last week how King Jehoshaphat almost died the death of Ahab. Because of the wrong company. Number six, completely shun fear. Job said, the things which I greatly feared. Is come upon me. Fear brings you into conflict with the object of your fear. Number seven, avoid wrong and negative words. Wrong and negative words. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. A person can last long by what he says. A person can die young by what he or she says. You will fulfill your days in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. amen. Number eight. This is the, the new one for today. It says, above, sorry, avoid existence above godly counsel avoid existence above godly counsel proverbs chapter 11 verse 14 proverbs 11 14 he said where no counsel is the people fall but in the multitude of counselors, 
there is safety. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counsel, counselors, there is safety. Proverbs chapter 24 and in verse 6. Proverbs 24 and in verse 6. He said, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. By wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Take note of the following first. That existence above counsel is existence above safety. Existence above counsel is existence without safety. Nothing can be said. No one can be safe. Where counsel is avoided. Second, godly counsel is key to, God, to divine covering. Godly counsel is key to divine covering. God will use counsel that is godly to give you covering for your life. In 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1 to verse 4, and then verse 7, all the way, and Satan stood up against Israel. And provoke David to number Israel. Satan. Satan. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba, even to Dan. And bring the number of them to me, that I may know it. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then do you require this thing? If Israel is one billion, they belong to God. They are your servant. If Israel is one trillion, they are your servants. Why do you require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Who are you to advise me? Who are you to counsel me? Wherefore Joab departed. And went throughout all Israel. And came to Jerusalem. Verse 7. Now the Bible said. And God was displeased with this thing. Therefore he smote Israel. And David said unto God. I have sinned greatly. Because I have done this thing. But now I beseech you. Do away the iniquity of thy servant. For I have done foolish, very foolishly. And the Lord spake unto God. David said saying. Go and tell David saying. Thus saith the Lord. I give you three things. Choose one of them. That I will do to you. Because you refuse to hear advice. So God came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, choose thee. Either three years of famine scarcity, or three months to be destroyed before your enemies, while that the sword of your enemies overtake you, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise yourself. What word I shall bring unto him that sent me? Would you want three years of famine? Or three years of destruction between your enemy? Or three days in the hands of the Lord? And David said, I am in a great strait. I don't know what to choose. All of them are bad. But let me fall into the hand of God. <laughs> because God is very merciful. If, you, if he hands me over to man, man will finish me. Let God deal with me himself. For very great are his mercies, but let me not fall in. How many of you believe that David was wise? God, don't hand me over to my enemy. You, they will just bury me now. Those who, are, those who hate my gods, those who are angry at my audacity, those who have been looking for how to finish me before they, because they think I'm progressing, don't hand me over to them. But that started and it began. 
because of lack of counsel. Is God speaking to anybody here? There, are with, there is without doubt a, a many people who are married in marriages today that they would not have dared if they had somebody. Am I communicating? Many years ago, a young man, and his, this will be like 25 years ago, a young man and his wife to be were in courtship. And they came. When I saw their interaction, I looked at, I told the lady quietly, I said, are you sure of this man? Cross check it very well. Now, there was a lot of disparity in every realm. She had finished university. The man had, she's a graduate working, good work, had a car. The man was still somewhere trying to struggle, hasn't gone to middle school. There was a lot of disparity. On top of that, the man was very temperamental. Everything was unequal. I said, are you sure of this man? And she went and told the man that I said uh, she should um, be careful with the man. <laughs> you know what? So I said, so when I got to know, I said, all right, oh, do what you want. I'm already married. I'm not looking for who to marry. It is for you, your safety, your future. So they went ahead and got married. Marriage did not go too far before the man would beat the hell out of her. This lady was working in, in, in the foreign ministry and they sent them to foreign posting. In that foreign field, the man dealt with her until they reposted them back to Nigeria. Strip her naked in, in, a, in, in, in foreign mission, foreign quarters. Long story made short, that marriage had no future. It's pleated, it's scattered on the spot. All went their separate ways. Counsel wasn't heard. It took only God to save her. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In our place, they say no matter how tall, Okra is. Owner will bend it. That's tall okra thing. Come down. Am I communicating? In our place, they said, what an elder stands on the ground and sees. A child climbs the story building, he can't see. Am I communicating? We have children of these days who think they are wiser than their parents in these internet days. No, sir. No matter how many new clothes a young child is, he can never have as many old clothes as an older person. <laughs> eh? <laughs> can never. Counsel. Whether it is spiritual counsel, especially counsel from those if somebody who hates you gives you an advice, you can doubt it. Somebody who wants your downfall, if he gives you a counsel, you may doubt it. Because he may be telling you something that will destroy you fast. But if somebody who has your, 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 who has your, 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 your value at heart, somebody who has your interest at heart, spiritual, godly, you say, check this thing again. It is not something to discard. Am I communicating? You know, Paul the Apostle was so spiritual that all the prophets, prophet Agabus, everybody was prophesying to Paul the Apostle concerning a particular journey he was about to make. And Paul the Apostle refused to hear anybody because he was the Apostle. In Acts chapter 21 from verse 10, you look at that. And as we tarry there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. When he, and when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the, Lord, the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and he shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. This is what the Jews in Jerusalem will do to the man who has this ghetto. Philip's four daughters already prophesied. Paul did not. Paul. And then Paul answered, 
what mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying, the will of the Lord be done. They carried rope. Agabus tied his hand. Whoever owns this ghetto, this cloth, this is what they would do to him at Jerusalem. All manner of voices came. Paul the apostle that was ordained by God to, the, to be the apostle of the Gentiles was insisting on preaching to the Jews or, or, or ministering to the Jews. He kept on saying, my heart's longing is for my brethren, the Jews. God ordained Paul to the Gentiles, Peter to the Jews. But Paul was insisting, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. Do you know the outcome? You know the outcome of what happened? The moment Paul arrived in Jerusalem, somebody screamed, help! The man that has been teaching everybody throughout the Gentile world that they should not obey the law of Moses, that man is here right now. Eh? And he has brought Gentiles into the temple to desecrate the temple because they saw nothing in the temple. They rushed at Paul. But they before they could finish with him, somebody carried him. They said, come, Oga, you know what? Scrape your hair and agree that you are also a Jew. You believe in the loss of the Jews. Paul went and scraped his head. Do you know that among the Gentiles, Paul was a celebrity? They worshipped him as God. In Acts chapter 14, they laid down. When they saw his ministry, the gods have come to us in the, in the likeness of men. But among the Jews where he was not called, he was a pauper. They messed him up. But Paul scraped his head. They were not convinced. One night, they made a plan. Can we go and beg the, the, the judge to release him? Let, let us judge him ourselves. And they planned. People vowed that they would not eat or drink until they have killed Paul. You know? And while they were making the plan, Paul's nephew heard and went and told the chief captain, excuse me, sir. And if he told Paul first. He says, uncle, I heard the plot that they are about to ask the chief captain to give you to them so that they can examine you. But it is a pretext. They have vowed that they will not eat until they have killed you. Paul said, Please, soldier, take this man, this boy, to the chief captain. Let him inform him. So he has something to tell him. That was the man who said he's ready to die. That was the man who said, I'm ready to die in Jerusalem. Ready to die in Jerusalem. Death came now. That was how. They went and told the chief captain and the chief captain organized his escape by night. Flew by night on chariot, on horses. His travail continued till the end. I believe that he would have appeared before Caesar another means. Just the way I believe that Joseph would have appeared before Pharaoh another way. Am I communicating? It doesn't matter how spiritual you are. There are things people will know that you don't know. True. It doesn't matter. I mean, I think God does it like that so that we can, we can, we can appreciate our humanity. And it doesn't matter how wise you are. You will never be able to see the back of your own head. Somebody need to see it for you. Except you are a witch that has eyes all around. And even in that regard, in the physical, you can't, there are things you don't know. Am I communicating at all? Please, let's, let's, let's calm down. Wisely, godly counsel. You have a calling. You are right. Everybody is wrong. That shows that you are wrong. You are right. Everybody is wrong. Nobody. There is nobody who can, who can advise you. Nobody can counsel you. Many have gone on journeys of destruction. Disaster. That will never be your portion. If you want to last, avoid existence above godly 
counsel. Number nine, maintain a clear conscience. A clear conscience. Proverbs chapter 28 and in verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursue. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 2. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Two things are very important here. Number one, when the conscience is not clear, boldness to trust God in the time of need is absent. When the conscience is not clear, boldness to trust God in the time of need is absent. Because we heard it is the righteous that can be as bold as a lion. That is the accuser of the brethren will come up with issues. Reason why you cannot expect to ask to pray to God and, and be heard. Secondly, when the conscience is not clear, there is a wall of separation between man and God that can prevent deliverance. That can prevent deliverance and divine intervention. When the conscience is not clear, there is a wall of separation between man and God that can prevent deliverance and divine intervention. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 and 2. It says it is not as if God's ear. Hand is shortened. That it cannot save. Not as if his ear is he heavy. That it cannot hear. He said but your iniquities. Have separated between you. That wall of separation. And have hid. And your sins have hid his face from you. That he will not hear. So he, he, though you are in the midst of trouble. God's hand is not able to stretch to you to pull you out of trouble because there is a wall of separation. You remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man. There is a wild, a wide gulf between you and us so that those on your side can't come here and those on this side cannot get there. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Boldness is weakened. Confidence is weakened. Divine presence is, is weakened. And deliverance is not possible. Counsel is refuse to exist with a defiled conscience. Don't live with it. Whatever you do, ensure that you refuse to live with an unclear conscience. Lord, I subscribe to your message. I subscribe to your mercy. I subscribe to your cleansing power. Very, very important. Maintain a clear conscience. Number 10. Maintain vision. Maintain a vision of the future. A vision of the future. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. He said, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Listen to this. First, when you see beyond the moment, you are licensed to live beyond the moment. When you see beyond the moment, you are licensed to live beyond the moment. No devil can kill a man in today 
who has seen his tomorrow. When you see beyond the moment, you are licensed to live beyond the moment. That is why where there is no vision, the people perish. Second thought is, when you have nothing to live for, you don't live for long. When you have nothing to live for, you don't live for long. Vision gives you something to live for. I am alive uh, if I have 10 more years, if I have 20 more years, if I have 25 more years, this is what I will be doing with my life. Does it amaze you how easily a very, very active man becomes very aged under one year after retirement? Do you understand? He just retired from civil service at the age of 60, 65. 60. And then before you can say, praise the Lord, this active man that wakes up with his suit, tie, sharp, to work every morning. <laughs> you don't know the last time he wore any sharp dress anymore. He just wears something like household wrapper. And then... Everything just degenerates. Because for 60 years, he had something he lived for that took him out every month, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And after that, he doesn't have so much anymore. Meanwhile, there are judges in the United States Supreme Court that are 90 years. They, are, they don't retire. They re, it's death that removes them from their Supreme Court. And they are still out there sharp auditions. Our own Supreme Court here is 70 years. While their colleagues have retired at the age of 60 or 65, they are still at work. And for as long as they are at work, they are, they are young. They look young. They look sharp. But if government retire you, don't retire yourself. Don't. There is so much to do with life. So much to do with life. When you have no reason, you have nothing to live for, you do not live for long. The other day, somebody looked at me and they said, how can you be so and so much? How can they say you are so, so, you, ha you are at such an age? You know the age they say I am? I'm sure some of you know. I said, me myself, I'm surprised. Because to me, I'm around 26 years. <laughs> How can you see a young man like this? You say he's 50 something. I am around 20. Don't, don't I look it? <laughs> and then I told somebody, I said, if not that I know the time I went to secondary school, I would have doubted the age. <laughs> And then I see my children. 26 cannot give birth to 20 something. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing that, that's the only escape. The only escape. But I have decided that I am 26 years old, but I may have 25 years experience at being 26. Do you know the meaning of that? I might have 27 years. I might even have 30 years experience at being 26. But basic age is 26 that has years of experience. Praise the Lord. That is another way to say, don't refuse to age. Refuse for age to deal with you. Refuse for time to deal with you. Refuse to wear out. Refuse to wear out. Refuse to wear out. Hallelujah. 
refuse, refuse. Keep something in front of you. Irrespective of what is happening around you. Let the life ahead of you be far. Number three thing to know is that vision determines and guarantees destination. It determines, it guarantees destination. If you can see there, you can get there. It determines and guarantees destination. Determines and guarantees destination. Determines and guarantees destination. It determines and guarantees destination. And the summary of it, fourthly, is that vision is a preservative of life. We have several stories that can be told of people that just remain there because they are seeing one more day, one more year. There is something more they are looking forward to in all circumstances. I told you the story many years ago I heard that a skyscraper collapsed and people were literally buried and then they were picking people out 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 from under the rubble on the seventh day they pulled the man out now they have pulled people out that were dead they pulled the man out that was alive after seven days under you said what happened he said i willed willed w i double l e d i willed to live when i heard the sound and i heard everything was going down and i heard south shouting and everything i made up my mind that i will live i willed to live i saw life beyond beyond this situation and pulled out after seven days in life you will not be cut short before your time if you are saying amen say it louder amen if you are saying amen, say a louder believer, say amen. If you are saying amen, say amen at the top of your voice. Shout the believers, amen. Maintain a vision of the future. And now, number 11 is the counterpart of number 10. It says, never share the visions, dreams, and secrets of your life with just anyone. Never share the visions, dreams, and secrets of your life with just anyone. Not everybody is qualified. To know the secrets, visions, and dreams of your life. Not everybody is qualified. And I will share with you two things. Genesis 37, verse 19, all the way to verse 20. You know the offense of Joseph? He shared visions and dreams with people that were not meant to hear them. And they said what one to another when they saw Joseph coming. Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into some pit and we will say some evil beast has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Do you see? What was paining them was the size of Joseph's dream. Who are you? Who are you? To say you can become this, you can become the who are you? Someone say amen. Not the following number one. Vision shared with the wrong people attracts unnecessary battles. Vision shared with the wrong crowd attracts unnecessary battles. Second, vision 
dreams shared with the wrong people, with the wrong crowd provokes bitterness, envy, and competitive jealousy. Bitterness, envy, competitive jealousy. When you give the vision to the wrong people. Hiya. Even those who don't know what is in your heart want to die because of where you are. Belente. Belente. <laughs> they want to die because of where you are and they don't know what is in your heart yet. They have no clue where you are going. When this sanctuary was built, some people almost died of convulsion. Almost died of convulsion. They lost sleep. Not knowing that we haven't started. Almost, just almost died. Died, died. died. See, oh. Let me tell you. It is not, how do I say it without fear of contradiction. All right. It is not every victory you share with people. I am not saying in the terms of testifying and sharing before the congregation and before God. I'm talking of talking to people that you are saying, let me confide in you. Let me tell you what God is currently doing in my life. There are people you talk to if they were not witches before they can turn into witches. That is, you know, matured bitterness is what is called witchcraft. Grown up bitterness. Bitterness that has graduated from Harvard. Listen, I am old enough to know of people who are bitter from childhood. Just very bitter at every good thing. They became witches. Confirmed witches. I'm aware of that. Confirmed. That is, the devil of witchcraft located them. That this one has enough hatred to be a witch. This one has enough bitterness to... to, to you see, somebody met me yesterday. And uh, he said he gave accommodation to somebody when he was doing internship. And the person was posted. The person slept with him overnight. And then the next day the person told him, don't be afraid though. I just wanted to let you know I'm a wizard. Is youth copper, youth copper. That is somebody that you saw on the road you wanted to help. By the time you gave him, he slept with you on the same bed. The next day, he said, "Just don't be afraid." What I'm about to say, just don't be afraid. Just to let you know, I'm a wizard. So you don't know which wizard is wearing suit. Or wearing Babariga, or wearing youth service uniform. Not a, not matured man, or young graduate just finished university. So, to confirm his witchcraft, he, he rehearsed the man's life to him. That was the man became afraid. What can I do? What can I do? Um, all right. And he mentioned people I know also bring some things, let me do something. And the man agreed. When the man saw how powerful he was, he told him, me too, I want to become wizard. Wait, I'm telling you a story. So this wizard boy contacted his father, who is the master wizard. So the, the, the man x-rayed the guy and said, no, his heart is too soft 
for witchcraft. He's too kind for witchcraft. He's not that this type can be recruited. That is, I want to be a wizard. We cannot at- admit you. You are not wicked enough. That is, if you want to apply for witchcraft, number one criteria qualification is wickedness that has matured. You will never sleep with wizard. And if ever wizard find their road, the fire that will burn them around you, they will confess not to intimidate you, but they will confess for repentance. If you are a believer, shout the loudest, amen. Lift your right hand and scream, power! Loudest power! At the top of your voice, power! Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. (laughs) Is God speaking to anybody here tonight? So imagine now you shared the whole of your... Now, you gave birth to a newborn baby and gave it to that kind of man to keep for you. You know what Delilah was looking for? Judges chapter 16 verse 6 and in verse 15 to 20. See what she was looking for. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me. I pray you, wherein thy great strength lieth, whereby thou might be bound to afflict you. So, when they can access your secret, they can destroy your immunity. Just tell me what is your secret. If I want to finish you, what should I do? Your secret is key to your security is key to your to your safety your safety your safety and Samson told her his secret the, the real secret so Samson started by telling lies he said, if you if you tie me with rope this and that but he, 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 when he pressed him with words in verse 15 all the way to verse 21. And she said unto him, how can you say I love you when you are, your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and you have not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him, urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. That he told her all his heart and said unto him, her, there, has no res- there has not come a razor upon my head. For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. And I shall become weak and be like any other man. This is the tragedy of all tragedies. The the, the balance of the story, you don't want to hear it. Because he summoned the Philistines at once. And his destruction started. See after me, not everybody is qualified for the secrets and visions and dreams of my life. Not everybody is qualified. That is why you should marry who you can trust. You should relate with who you can confide in. Otherwise, I've seen men, I've seen women who are jealous of their wives and husbands and vice versa. Am I communicating? Who do you think you are to be bigger than me? Never share the visions of your life. See what Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 and 6 say. Am I right? Will you check Mark for me? 7, 6 and 7. Um, all right. Let me, let me just look at it. Hallelujah. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. My secrets shall not go out just like that. 
to the wrong people, to the wrong crowd. All right. In ICT, in case you are able to look at this, he said, cast not your pearl before the swine. And don't give holy things to dogs. First, he said, give not holy things to dogs. And then cast not your pair. Okay, seven. So what happened? Matthew 7. So went to 7. All right. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearl. What is pearl? Your precious material. Precious jewel. Don't hand it over to, to pig. See? Lest he trample them under their feet and then turn again to attack you. How many of you saw anything there? Anybody who does not have your values, your principles, your qualities, don't give them your valuables. Don't give your valuables to people who do not have your sense of value. Who do not have your principles. You know why? Because what you value, they will trample it on their feet. You value it so much, but it means nothing to them. They will just mess it up and say, what do you think you are? You say God called you rubbish. Uh, you say that you want to become this in this Nigeria, they will trample it under their feet and that is not the worst thing. They will attack you on top. And turn around. When I saw it, I couldn't believe it. This is in the Bible. For sharing with you what I am not meant to share with you, number one, you rubbish it. Number two, you attack me. Many of us, we invited unnecessary attack because we talk too much. Invited unnecessary, you talk too much. Some people, some girls, their relationships spoiled because of who they talk to. That man is the one you want to marry. <laughs> Men finished from this world. He will talk, talk to you like that and then go back behind and meet a man. Do you know the girl you want to marry at all? You know her. I don't think you know her. You don't know who you are dealing with. Head, jam head. The man said no. Later, this girl begins to go back Nicodemusly. Have you eaten today? Should I make something for you? <laughs> Mado. <laughs> like the like the young people of this generation used to say. <laughs> Did I say it in the correct context? <laughs> because I know I have heard it. But I don't know whether the context is correct. Mado. <laughs> or you have not heard that somebody's best friend married the man she was meant to marry? You haven't heard before? Plenty. How did that happen? It is called witchcraft chemistry. Don't cast your pearl before the swine. Not every, no, not every, not everywhere you find yourself, you talk. And not every time people are talking, you have to say anything. Those of you who like to talk, you see, because there are some of us, uh, our temperament is very, very calm. If you catch me outside the pulpit, you, 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 you have to literally pull words from my mouth. But there are people who talk without any provocation. The first time they see man, how are you? Well done. I like your tie. 
Well done. What of my own? Do you like it? <laughs> just, 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 just. It's like we used to say in the village, sickness of word. Word sickness is worrying him. The sickness of talking is worrying him. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? And if you ever have such an issue, just calm down. People have talked their ways into the grave. Let God guide you and let God lead you to who and who to talk with. Who to share your, your vision with. Who to share inmost secrets of your heart with. Who to share innermost details of life with. So that they don't trample it under feet. What you value, they psh, get out. It doesn't mean anything. Who do you think you are? Who has ever achieved what we are talking about? Relax, calm down. And then on top of that, they begin to attack you. They rent, they turn again and begin to attack you. What was your offense? You gave them what you were not meant to give them. It will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Lift your right hand and say, Father, I receive the grace never to share the vision of my life the, with the wrong people. The secrets of my life and my dreams with the wrong people in the name of Jesus. Finally, maintain strong prophetic covering. Wisdom for preservation. Maintain very strong prophetic covering. Do not let your life be without a cover. Hosea chapter 12 and in verse 13. Hosea chapter 12 and in verse 13. He said, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, was he preserved. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, was he preserved. Your prophet is critical for your preservation. Your prophet is critical. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. We saw how David was anointed by the prophet Samuel and that anointed made him to face Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17. In Matthew chapter 14 and in verse 28, we saw how the prophetic covering that Jesus had prevented Peter from sinking sorry the prophetic covering that peter had the prophetic covering of jesus prevented peter from sinking into the mare. hallelujah i've said this before but let me say two things and then we we'll rise up and pray number one your prophetic covering determines your destiny coverage you can have a wide coverage for your destiny if you have a strong prophetic covering your prophetic covering determines your destiny coverage your how 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 wide and how far your destiny can go is determined by your prophetic covering number two is something something you all already know as well the mantle of your prophet fights the battle of your preservation the mantle of your prophet fights the battle for your preservation he fights the battle there are many people in this assembly who said that in the dream of the night they saw somebody coming to attack them and all of a sudden they saw the mantle of the commission. God using the face of his servant and stepped in, rescued them from those demons and set them free. The mantle of your prophet fights the battle for your preservation. My counsel is first recognize your prophetic covering. Recognize your prophetic covering covering record who is my prophet let it be clear to you let there be no doubt number two respect your prophetic covering the mantle you don't honor can never profit you the mantle you don't honor will never profit you Respect and value your prophetic covering. 
Number three, receive and obey prophetic instructions from your prophetic covering. Receive and obey. Not just one on one, but in the course of services like this, you receive and you obey instructions that come. <clears throat> Anyone whose instruction you cannot obey, his unction can never profit you. Receive and obey prophetic instructions. And I believe it is a new day for somebody. Let me say what I have said many, many times. Nobody here shall die like chicken. You are not a wasteable material. No devil shall finish you before your time. You shall fulfill your days. Stand up on your feet and shout the loudest amen. Shout the loudest amen. Shout amen at the top of your voice. How many of you heard anything tonight? It's a rainfall, a download. But it's a new season for you. It's a new season for you. The mantle of this commission shall answer every time you are in a time of urgency. Lift your hands and give the Lord the praise and the honor for this moment. Give him the adoration. We are going to position for some brutal intercession for the next maybe 10 minutes and I want you to make yourself available for this intercession lift your hands and say father thank you for your word to my life today I ask that this word will produce the desired results in my life in this season in the name of Jesus say again father thank you for your word to me tonight i ask lord that your word will produce drastic results in my life in this season oh lord in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray